Hi, today I'd like to present the way English lessons are taught at KDUG and specifically the recipe behind our success at the national speaking examinations. Uh, so the first thing we do here at KDUG is we take a look at the theory behind speaking and we learn it from this book, Speaking for Exams. I like to say that every single student from KDUG knows this book by heart and it helps us tremendously to achieve a good grade uh, on the national speaking examination. Uh, so we look at how to describe bar charts and pie charts as well as various other graphs. Uh, we learn certain vocabulary and also grammar structures and linking words. So basically everything that is strictly uh, adherent to the National Examination Center criteria for the speaking exam. Uh, of course, merely theory isn't enough and we put it into practice in various ways. Uh, the most common one being typing out or recording a monologue and sending to it to our teachers um, who then proceed to give us feedback on it. Uh, we can also at some times uh, project the monologue on a screen so that not only teachers but students get to provide feedback on it. Uh, this helps students uh, learn and realize their mistakes and therefore uh, in the future achieve a better grade when the time comes to uh, speak for the national speaking exams. Um, another thing we do is we look at exams from other years uh, since they are all quite similar in style and content. Um, so we only get five or ten minutes of preparation time when we do that and then we speak in pairs so we do a monologue and a dialogue and afterwards the students uh, provide feedback to each other. Uh, again, this just uh, makes it so we have different sources of opinion and so we can uh, learn better that way. Uh, one of the biggest things we do, however, is we organize a mock speaking credit with other schools. Uh, so, for example, the Lithuanian Health Sciences University Gymnasium or the uh, Jonas Ibonskis Gymnasium. That way we emulate the experience that one might uh, see at the actual examination. Um, we emulate not only the topics, but also uh, the setting of the whole exam. So when the, when the time comes to uh, tackle the real deal, uh, students will already be familiar with the, um, the structure of the whole exam. And most importantly, they will already have experienced the stressful conditions that the exam takes place under. And as such, they will be more relaxed and be able to uh, achieve a better grade on the national speaking examination. So this concludes my speech about KDUG's uh, approach to national speaking examinations. Um, so hello, and I'm going to provide um, a monologue example so the topic of my speech is daily routine. To start with, I would like to describe the given bar chart. It, it depicts how many hours per day school leavers in the USA dedicate to certain activities. The x-axis represents the tasks, while the y-axis is for the number of hours. Overall, we can see that pupils devote way more time to sleeping and schoolwork than to other three activities. Uh, on average, high school students spend around the same amount of time resting and studying, about seven hours daily. Four hours are usually dedicated to hobbies and maintaining an active lifestyle, while three hours are devoted to both working and other miscellaneous tasks. In short, the typical time use of American school leavers varies from seven to three hours daily. Having looked at the bar chart, I would like to move on to question two. My daily activities do not differ that much from the ones presented in the chart. The only significant difference is the amount of hours. Uh, well, for example, I, on average, I sleep around six hours daily and spend more time on studying and doing schoolwork. Uh, and that's some, that amounts for about eight hours daily. 
these both acti these both activities are also the matters uh, that I spend the most time on. And well, we can't deny that studying is very important in order to get a secondary and later on a tertiary education in u in university. So that is why I try to focus on this particular task. And well, the second most prominent sleeping is crucial to a person's mental and physical health. So by hitting the sheets, you kill two birds with one stone by letting your brain and your body rest and prepare for another day. Uh, regarding the statement given in question three, I believe that weekends should mostly be spent unwinding and doing other schoolwork or work unrelated activities such as traveling, shopping, exercising or meeting up with friends. In my eyes it's okay if you have to finish an assignment or study for a test, but you have to be very careful not to overwork yourself as it could lead to a burnout and it would only go downhill from there. And uh, another reason is that the weekend provides the opportunity to spend your time uh, how you want it. Usually it's really difficult to maintain a hectic weekday schedule and it's almost impossible to devote as much time on your hobbies as you would want. So the weekend gives you the chance to do whatever you want. And to sum up my speech, uh, well, everyone has their unique daily routine and manage their time diff differently. However, I believe that the right balance between work and rest should be found.